Let's answer the question, what is swap? Why do you need it and what is it used for? It can be a little complicated, but nothing we can't handle. We first must figure out what swap space is used for. But before we answer that question, let's look and see what the swap space looks like here on this Ubuntu 20.04 system that I have running in front of me. Now I'll make a distinction. There's typically swap partitions and swap files. Older systems used to use swap partitions where you would see an actual partition that was allocated here, typically towards the end of the storage disk. And here you can see on mine, since this is a newer operating system, it, it does not have any swap space or a swap partition in the far back of the disk. Let's check out if this system has it at all. All right, using free, it tells me the amount of free memory, including physical and what we're talking about, swap. Notice we have around two gigs of swap and eight gigs of physical memory. So where is that swap space located? Well, let's go to the root directory clear things out here, and I'll list a specific file that's located in the root directory, the swap file. If I do ls-la and we do it on the swap file, you'll notice that it's a two gig file that exists on the system, and this is what's known as a swap file. Most modern Linux-based operating systems are using swap files instead of swap partitions. So what is a swap file or swap partition, swap space? All these questions that we have well, it's a space that's used for spillover of physical RAM. Let's say your operating system is, is for some reason running out of physical memory or RAM on the system. Well, what happens then is without any swap space, the system would begin to stall. Things would slow down or you might get errors or even the blue screen of death as you may have seen time and time again on Windows. Well, Linux handles this a little bit differently. It allows you to spill over into this swap space, and that swap space is usually a file or partition. Let's bring out the old pen notebook and talk more about swap space. So again, this is typically either a file on the system or a partition. Nowadays, files are most likely what your system uses, and you are not forced to actually have any swap space on your system, but it is typically encouraged. So how is swap space allocated and known to be where it is? Well, the operating system, if we just think about this box as our operating system, of course, some form of Linux. There are special pointers, such as in the fstab file, that allow the operating system to understand where that swap file SF or partition is located. Then if memory gets too full over here, it just dumps over into the swap file or partition. Of course, it's a lot more complicated than that, but you get the picture, at least you understand how things kind of correlate here. Along with swap space, there are values typically associated to the swap that allows the operating system to know how aggressively it needs to use the swap space, this is called niceness. And you can actually set this value on your system so it increases the likelihood to use swap space and leave more physical memory available for, for caches. So just to explain this, if you decrease this value, it might be counterintuitive. So a decrease in the value of niceness will increase the likelihood of using swap space. So a value like niceness equal to zero, that means use swap more and a niceness of 100 use less. And with this, I give you the numbers that you can actually set the niceness in between two. It's between zero and 100. Are you ready to start learning about Linux today? Check out my Linux checklist and cheat sheet at learn.savvynick.com. There's a link below. Make sure to check out what your niceness level is. Do a little bit of research and see and make that a project for yourself. If you'd like more references to creating, resizing, extending, Linux swap files or partitions. I do have videos on this. I'll post them in the description below. A few more things I want to mention about swap. One, let's think of it as a safety net in case physical memory overflows. Two, there are processes on modern operating systems called OOMs, which start killing processes whenever they use too much memory. 
So swap space can help you extend the time before this OOM process kicks in. OOM just stands for out of memory. Three, we can also say that swap can help if, let's say memory decides there's a process that hasn't really been used in a while. Well, it could potentially cache that memory into swap until it's ready to use it again, predicting that you may or may not use that process or program in the future, but don't need access to it right now. It's been a while since you used it. Well, why not free up physical memory? We'll call that PM and pass it over to swap for a little bit until it needs to be exchanged back. Let's say you were playing chess for quite a while and then you just let it go. You exit it out. It's been a little while. Well, in the background, maybe you want to start it up again before long. You like playing chess a lot. Well, it might throw it over to this swap space. And then as soon as you bring it back up, boom, you go from swap right back into physical memory, giving you a little bit of a head start there. So the takeaway is even if there's some RAM available or physical memory, the kernel will move that memory around if it's being hardly used into that swap space. The last thing I want to just warn about, do not set your swap space to large. That's a no-no as well. Most people say about two times your physical memory is more than enough. And as you get more and more physical memory, and especially in a server setting, the swap might not benefit you quite as much, but it's definitely important to understand swap how it works, how to set it up, what it does, and the niceness level on your system. That way you get an even better experience using Linux-based operating systems. Let me know how much swap space you have in the comments section below. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. Make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.